Traveling the Vortex. We've joined the Doctor as he travels the Vortex and arrive at episode number 426, where we return finally. I'm Keith. I'm, oh, jeez, I was through. I was, I was jumped in. Well, sure. we're, out of, we're out of practice, guys. It's been a while. <laughs> I was I'm waiting going. for you, actually. It was like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Which order do we go in again? <laughs> well, we're not set in our usual places, so. Oh, this no. is true. <laughs> this isn't my chair. Uh, how is everyone? Not good. too bad. Have you guys had a good couple of weeks? <laughs> Apologies to our uh, listeners that we've been off for a couple of weeks now. <laughs> for a f- proper episode. We had that nice yeah. mini one about Planet Comic Con, but now That's we're right. back in full force and regular format. Do you guys do anything fun with your time? Ooh. I don't even remember what I've done. I've been working odd hours. I was sick. Yeah. Oh, that's not fun. That's right. So sick. You went to a uh, Richard, uh, not Richard. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> wow. His name is totally gone from my Dreyfus. Richard Dreyfus uh, concert. Or not concert. <laughs> Speech, speaking, speaking engagement. An evening with. An evening drawing with Richard Dreyfus. Yes. <laughs> How I was did. that? Uh, it was, it was pretty amazing. Uh, it, it was one of those things that, uh, I just happened to see pop up on my, uh, Facebook feed that another one of my friends was going to, and I went say what he, he's coming to uh, a locale near me. And, uh, then we looked at ticket prices and, uh, like generic, you know, go sit and listen was 30, 40 bucks. I was like, well, that's a deal and a half. And then we looked at the VIP meet and greet tickets and they were, and I, I, I use this only 150 and, uh, normally $150 would also be outside of my price range. But considering that anytime we've looked at anything remotely along those lines, like we looked at a meet and greet for Weird Al Yankovic and he was, I think 350 the last time he came through, Oof. uh, and they've all been up in that price range. And it was like 150 bucks for Richard Dreyfus. We just, we, we couldn't, couldn't pass that one up. So even though I was not feeling good, I went and infected him. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't actually get sick. Do you know? He did. Did you see he's in the hospital? Oh, I don't know. Just was hospitalized like Friday. I think it was. Had some severe gastrointelligence or gastrointelligence. <laughs> gastrointestinal. <laughs> well, you know, you might have gastrointelligence too. Ooh, it didn't come from Sean. So, you know. Right, right. In, in well, completely no. unrelated news, I'm I'm writing a new Doctor Who villain, the gastrointelligence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can neither confirm nor deny that he got that from me. <laughs> but no, it was it was it was really something. Took it photos like and signed autographs, and you know it was cool. That's awesome. What did you guys do? Something I had to, re- I had to re-up my. Uh, uh, HBO subscription last night to watch <laughs> Game of Thrones. I did that on Friday and then Saturday discovered uh, HBO now is no longer supporting PlayStation 3. Oh no. Oh. Yeah, and of course I didn't resubscribe through Amazon or Hulu. I went straight to HBO now. <laughs> Luckily I have HDMI cords and I can plug my TV, my laptop into my TV. Ah, good. It was a good episode. It was. Sean, a good have episode. you watched it? I have not. We uh, uh, we we are on the the Patrick is going to make us uh, suffer and wait plan. Uh, so oh, we, we we did finish uh, Umbrella Academy this week. So we oh. kind of knocked a slot open for for Game of Thrones. But yeah, we're we're forced to wait until next week's shows before we can before we can partake, which we'll actually watch Wednesday. So. Oh, that's not too far off then. No, nah, it won't be too bad. All right. Well, let's move on to news. Let's. There's lots of news this week because we missed a couple of weeks. Uh, the first bit is the trailer has dropped for the new VR game, The Runaway. 
It will debut at the Tribeca Film Festival next week and then be available on VR devices in the UK in the coming months. No official release date yet and no official US release date yet. What do you guys think of the trailer? It's a trailer. <laughs> Apparently you fly the TARDIS, save the world. Epic adventure. If That's I was in the VR, I'd say. be really excited. <laughs> Oh, I think it would be fun if I had the availability for it, but, um, you know, I'm, I can't get super excited because I'm never been super excited about VR anyway, although I, I hear it's very cool and I know people like that or, you know, enjoy it. So, yeah, but I think it's pretty cool. If I get a chance, you know, if, if the opportunity was presented to me, I would certainly indulge, but I'm not going to race out to try to figure out how to do it. So. The nice thing is, oh, or I don't know if this is the nice thing or not, is if you're ever at some place that's demoing it, you could probably do it in the demo because it's only 12 minutes long. Okay, there you go. <laughs> now, if you're going to buy it, it might not be as great because it's only 12 minutes long. Okay, sir, for this demo, you're only going to get 15 minutes and we're going to run a clock. That's okay. I only need 12. <laughs> <laughs> you can have the extra three. It's okay. <laughs> What happens if you have to give, respawn? <laughs> give, give my give my three to Timmy. In other news, there are rumors circulating, much like there were previously, ahead of other announcements. <laughs> that well, that's true with anything. <laughs> a season ten box set is coming out of Blu-ray, not mm-hmm. series ten, season yeah. ten. Which would be be Pertwee season two, three, season three for the U.S. If you go with the way that they've been numbering the U.S., it'll be John Pertwee season three. for. So this is uh, North American buyers. Is it season three? I believe it's his third season. Yeah. Or wait, no, it's a second season. No, because it starts with um, it starts with the three doctors. So, yeah, season four. So it starts with the three doctors and ends with the green death. Yes. So okay. Joe's last season. Joe's last season. So frontier in space and uh, carnival Planet of, of the monsters. Daleks, carnival of monsters. Planet of the Daleks. Oh, you just said that. The three doctors and, and the green death. The green death, which is not, not a bad season. Not in that order. <laughs> no, not, not in that no. order. Definitely not in that order. You suppose they're starting with that one because of the three doctors. That would make sense, I guess. As much sense as you could make of it. It's well, it's it's certainly Return of the Daleks, um, Three Doctors, Joe's finale. I mean, there's there's some good stories in there. So, and for those people who aren't familiar with the Third Doctor's run, it is kind of the season that returns him to the status quo as a Doctor. That's mm-hmm. true, because he does get off of Earth in that season. So Yeah. Yeah, you've got a couple of bonus uh, points in that one. I mean, obviously, the Three Doctors, so you get the anniversary episode in there. So that's a, that's a cool factor. You have uh, at least one Delgado Master. Um, and well, in, in fact, it's the last Delgado <laughs> the Master. The final one, yeah. Um, you get the last Joe story in there. So there, there's, there's some big moments within that season, but it is normal doctor who quote unquote you've got him traveling in tardis you've got uh uh you know daleks you've got uh, some 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 regular stuff but also from uh i think from a technical standpoint the the pertwee era because if you go to the last season well you've got invasion of the dinosaurs and i i, I I'm, I'm just not sure that a blu-ray presentation of that is maybe quite the way to go yeah and if you go to the first season, you've got um, well, there's a there's one that's already on Blu-ray in the first season. Yeah, Spearhead is, but isn't uh, is it Ambassadors where one of them was where they've had to color correct it? Was it Ambassadors? Yeah, the first first episode of uh, I think it's the Ambassadors because they never had the um, the the color episode, so it was just in black and white. So they've had to colorize it. So I'm wondering if that, from a technical reason, maybe is giving them pause. Um, with uh, putting it on Blu-ray, it could be. I mean, that's very even, possible. I mean, they did the. They actually did what's called color transfer because what they did is they took the color information from the uh, 
from a VH, not a VHS, but a taped copy and put it back on the original. And I think they had a, a North American or a, 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 what do you call it? What is ours? NT, NTSC. NTSC, uh, yeah. NTSC version. And they, they had to color transfer it to the PAL format. But yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it might show its stripes on the um, digital version, I suppose. I think people will be forgiving of it because it's only one episode. I'll also freely admit I'm completely talking out of one side of my mouth. I do not know. So. <laughs> no, you're 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 absolutely right. I can't remember if it for sure it was ambassadors. I think you're right, but uh, one of them they had to do color transfer on it. I remember we were impressed when we watched it. <laughs> I think we just we we just slightly noticed it, but then again we were watching a you know standard quality version, so mm-hmm. on DVD. But it didn't look bad on DVD. So no, one well, like my my player up converts any DVD to higher definition. It's not full 1080 or anything, but no, it probably converts it to 640 or 720. Yeah, and it looked good from what I remember there. So I don't know. It'll be interesting to see if uh, in the next couple of days this announcement actually comes out. Oh, I bet we'll see it. I, I've actually been seeing that on speculation or or not even speculation. I think it was pretty well educated speculation um, back since November. So it's been, it's been batting around out there. I think when somebody finally got a hold of uh, some images of it is what gave it a little bit of validity. So, Hmm. because it it literally looks like what the box art for the UK versions looks like. So, Oh yeah, definitely. The, I I, I suppose we should, uh, we, we should quantify this by saying that it's, it's not the standard, yeah, we think they're bringing out yet another box set rumor. It's the, there seems to be some traction on this and we've seen some potential artwork packaging for it. Yeah, so exactly. that's where we're going with this. If, if nothing else, somebody mocked up some very similar style packet artwork and made some nice images out of it, if anything else. Exactly. All right. Well, what's next? We'll see. Up next in the news, uh, Big Finish has announced Ravenous 4, the final volume of the Ravenous series. We'll see the 8th Doctor battle the Masters. So they're doing another multi-master story again. This time against the 8th Doctor. And multi-master being Michelle Gomez, Derek Jacoby, Jeffrey Beavers, and Eric Roberts. Woo-hoo. So Paul McGann no going up work. against <laughs> Eric. I don't know how they brought him back in the River, Diary of River Song either, but I to to hear Paul McGann and Eric Roberts quote unquote on screen together. I now really want to just power through all of Ravenous so I can get to it as soon as possible. I mean, he, he obviously gets out of the I harmony in some way because he ends up, uh, well, we presume eventually becoming, uh, Derek Jacobi's. Well, even, even before that, he's, um, Oh, I can't remember the guy that's been playing him in big finish. Uh, but there's an inter, there's a interition, in, in, interition, inter, Oh, there's the a, bald master. Yeah. There's a revelation. <laughs> <sighs> there's a, there's a guy between, <laughs> <laughs> between, uh, uh, <laughs> Eric Roberts' doctor and, and uh, Jacoby's doctor, or not doctor. I, I am so tired. I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> With <laughs> guys, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> an incarnation. incarnation. Yes, an incarnation. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't have anything to do with the uh, Lucy, Mi- ah, Lucy Miller uh, volume one we're getting to. This is, no, it different. doesn't. That's That's different. And then there's also because there's Lucy Miller vol- Lucy Miller Volume One. See then now they also it's contagious. Announced, You're catching it. Yeah, too. That. and now they've also announced the further adventures of Lucy Miller and the Eighth Doctor, something along those lines. So it's another box set of the two of them together, where the Lucy Miller adventures is, I think, without the Doctor. Oh, I didn't see that one. I'm looking at the uh, further adventures of Lucy Miller Volume. Yeah, they they had, okay. they had previously announced. Uh, a Lucy Miller story that at least I got the impression was going to be doctorless. Golly, how much money are they paying uh, Sheridan Smith? They must have her on like long term contract to have this much stuff. Come well, out. I think she, uh, 
had gone away for quite a while and now has come back. Well, I guess she doesn't die. I've been all along thinking, waiting for the shoe to drop well, and I... her to get killed. I thought she was going to die in that eight leg story we've got. She didn't. <laughs> the answer is Maybe. all the monies. That's how much they're paying her. <laughs> all the monies. All the monies. I still, it's big finish, so you never know what's going to happen. Well, that's true. I mean, they're bringing <laughs> Robert's dog. Yeah, ex- exactly. <laughs> Anything can happen. So don't hold out hope yet, Glenn. He, she could still die. <laughs> she could still die. <laughs> don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. <laughs> <laughs> so these adventures of um, the further adventures of Lucy Miller happen after Human Resources. So they're they're pulling a big finish and sandwiching the stories within themselves. So she could die. She still could die. Okay. Well, probably not within that box set. Sean, not in this box set. No, no, no. Sean's still strumming his fingers because he knows. He's right. just that more ahead of us. So. Ask me no questions. I'll tell you no lies. <laughs> oh, what else do we got? That's the big finish news. And then finally, some Candy Jar Books news. Uh, they have released a short story called... Oh, I just lost my link. Where'd it go? Pirates of the Prime Meridian. Yes. Written by who, Glenn? Uh, well, now you put me on the spot. By uh, Roy Martin. <laughs> there we go. I found my article finally. <laughs> it's available now for you to download and read. Uh, they have also announced that the spinoff series Travers and Wells is going to continue, much like we kind of already knew. Yep. Uh, this time... And how excited are you for this? I am stoked. <laughs> and I'm trying to find the title. <laughs> um, the City of Dr. Moreau, yes. I believe. Thank you. Don't ask me who wrote it. <laughs> In a paperback edition. I believe so, written by Andy Frank of Allen. The funny thing about that is I was just literally that morning I woke up and I thought, you know what I'm going to bring up on the episode this week? The fact that we haven't seen another Travers and Wells. Whatever happened to that story? And I literally, after I thought that, <laughs> opened my email to see the press release. And I'm like, oh, well, they're answering my question right there. So I didn't, even get a, I didn't even get to bring that question to the podcast to say, hey, whatever happened to Travers and Wells? It's still here. It's still coming. It's coming. He just was working on it. Is it, uh, is it Andy or is it? Don't uh, think I turn it was those the same out like, No, I'm sorry. It's Andrew Allen. Yeah. Don't Andrew they just Allen. turn those out in like, I don't know, two weeks or something? Don't they just <laughs> write those in a couple weeks and then put a book out? You'd think, but. That's how that works, doesn't it, Sean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> you can also get a paperback edition of Other Wars, Other Worlds, the first Travers and Wells story. And then the last bit of uh, candy jar news is Lucy Wilson has been nominated for the Scribe Award. Yay! Which one? I'm trying to find that also. <laughs> <laughs> so it just says uh, nominated for the Scribe Awards. Let me. Yeah, there's a, it do shows a, a picture order. of uh, the clowns one. I thought. Maybe oh, I thought you were asking photo which, to use. I thought you were oh, asking which story. Scribe award. Oh, yeah. Uh, Curse of which, the Mirror Clowns. Which scribe award? I thought there was like subcategories of, you the know. The scribe award. I mean, come on. It's probably children's literature or young adult or something. See that part? I don't know. I don't know anything about the scribe awards. I don't either, but I was, asking which, I was asking which story. <laughs> well, you didn't specify. Curse of the Mirror Clowns. <laughs> what I thought. Boy, we take time off and uh, <laughs> look how of, organized we are. Just kind of fall apart. All sorts of disarray, aren't we tonight? Oof. All right. Well, let's move on to feedback. Our feedback this week comes from Jameson. Jameson writes, "Hey there, vortexers. I'll make this quick." <laughs> I thought he was gonna. I can't find the email. I was concerned for a moment. <laughs> Consider this a special news bulletin. Currently, I'm in the middle of wait, 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 wait. And now a Muppet News flash. There you go. 
Currently, I'm in the middle of episode 100. More comments on that in a later feedback. Congratulations on reaching 425 episodes. Here's to another 425. Alonzi, Jamie. P.S. May you all live long and prosper. Thank you, Jamie. Is, is he legally allowed to uh, to to do that? Any feedback? Is he legally allowed to do what? To 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 wish us a live long and prosper on a Doctor Who <laughs> podcast. Hang on, let me get a ruling from the judge. Yeah, he says we'll accept it. Okay. <laughs> he says he he cites uh, tangential uh, conversations as a, pre- <laughs> as a precedent. So fair enough. Thank you, Jamie. We uh we th- this is actually four twenty six for the it is four twenty six yeah. isn't it. It is 426. Yes. It is 426. For those keeping track at home, because we're sure not. <laughs> but we didn't do feedback last week, so we thought we'd include it this week. But um, it feels uh, feels good. feels good to be 426 strong. And it felt good last week to be 425 strong. Yes, it yes, did. It did. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our reviews. All right. The revisionists. <laughs> Say that with some enthusiasm. I'm the one that's tired. <laughs> All right. No. Are you kidding? It's almost midnight. I have to be at work at eight. I'm tired too. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Grumble. Uh... Keith, Keith has to get up in three hours. No, that's Sean. Sean has to yeah. get up in three hours. <laughs> <laughs> but who knows how many times Jimmo will wake up in the night. So <laughs> Sean's doing his. Uh... WKRP impersonation here. It's heavy early. <laughs> <laughs> the revisionists. Guests at a hotel are being haunted by ancestors that never existed. The brigadier was only in Geneva to finalize his retirement. But how could he resist? Investigating, the brigadier quickly finds something unusual. A warrior in leathers. A warrior called Leela. History is about to catch up with both of them. History that neither of them thinks is real. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, I think I liked this story. Yeah, it was an enjoyable short trip. It's been like three or four weeks ago that I listened to it. <laughs> <laughs> it um, I'll go first. I, it, it, this was um, a combination of a lot of fan fun fan service fun and just out of reach frustration. Okay. Because it was fun to finally have the brig and Leela together, which we had not had. It was fun to have a story set in Geneva. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. I was Uh so looking forward to that because we always hear about Geneva. Oh, the brigs in Geneva, blah, blah, blah. We're actually in Geneva. We're going to get to see what goes on. No, no, we're really not. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm first, I'm sure. first and foremost, because it was an audio. <laughs> well, I'm sure it's boring. I'm sure it's probably, you know, meetings and paperwork, but it's, I, I would love to do, I, I, I now have a new goal. I want to do something that is, you know, the Geneva convention that gets invaded by aliens. And instead of going, oh, unfortunately, the brig is not here. It's all the brigs are here. You know, (laughs) (laughs) there's an abundance of talent that's ready to take care of whatever the problem is. This is why they never invade Geneva. I know. The brigs are there and it's pointless. (laughs) They get defeated summarily. It's Switzerland. How exciting could it be? (laughs) That's apparently neutrality extends, you know. (laughs) But um, it, 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 it was fun and it was frustrating because it, it, for me, it didn't really feel like it kind of went anywhere beyond just the fun nostalgia factor of the fan service of it. The, 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 the plot with, oh, these aliens coming in and giving us these relatives that, you know, suddenly rewriting your own personal history could have been 
uh, a very malevolent threat. Could have been something scary. Could have been something this, and it, it really kind of turned out not to be. And part of that was again the confines of a, a companion chronicle, basically a short trip. We're we're you know limited by format. There's not much room to flesh it out and do much more with it than what we got. And so it's fine to tell a small story, but I wanted a little bit more meat, um, a little more substance from from the proceedings than what we got. Yeah, I would I would agree to some extent. Just I guess going into it knowing it was a short trip, I didn't expect to be there to be a whole lot of meat there. Mm -hmm. And so therefore I was able to kind of sit back and just enjoy the ride as it was, as opposed to longing for more that I knew that wouldn't be there. Yeah. Because I think the idea is, is very nice. And I think the characterizations of Leela and of course the brig and the doctor, I think were, were pretty spot on. And as were uh, Louis Jameson's performances, I really enjoyed listening to her tell the story the whole time. Yeah. Um, Andy, course wrote this story and i think a lot of credit goes to him for knowing the voice of all these characters but i think that um uh just said her name and i can't it's uh, thank you louise jameson i think she does a really good job uh conferring the um voice that you know that, that the words put in her mouth and i think she she has a as much of a grasp on all these characters, even Lethbridge Stewart, who, as you said, you know, this is the first time, at least from our perspective, um, they may have uh, crossed paths in other stories that we haven't reviewed yet. But, uh, you know, from our perspective, her having no uh, really background or connection uh, to him in any of the stories that she did, I think she does a, a remarkable job of giving the Brigadier the voice that that uh, he certainly should have so Mm -hmm. and i don't mean he did a spot on brigadier impression (laughs) but i mean in the in the nature and spirit that she did it it was very much the brigadier and and again i I think credit goes to uh andy who's very very familiar with that character and probably able to put those words in anybody's uh you know mouth and and be able to to come across with the familiarity we have with the brig yeah i would agree the only character i felt we didn't Maybe n- nail one hundred percent, but more like ninety was the doctor. He almost felt a little pared back from what I'm used to of that doctor with Leela. He's a hard nut to crack, though, because oh he's yeah, just so eccentric. I think that it's 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 really difficult for anybody to. There are so many different versions of him throughout his entire run. Yeah, that you can point to anything and see. Well, yeah, it's here, here, and here. And how do you combine right. them all together for this one instance? It, the fact that he was able to do as well as he did, I'm astounded by. Because I sure couldn't. <laughs> Very true. Good stuff. Good stuff. What'd you guys think of the the Malai, the, Malai, the the alien threats, and how they were, what what their true purpose was? Probably my least favorite part was the reveal of what was behind this. I kind of felt that they were more in an unintentionally meddlesome. Yeah, by that yeah. I mean they 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 had a necessity for taking the memories, uh, but they they really felt just a little impish. I didn't want a. I, I like that it's it was a misunderstanding. I like that it was a. Um, alien race or species going about things wrong the best way they knew, but, 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 but the wrong way of going about it. So I appreciated that. It's, I think the realization of them though, I think, and maybe this is down to Louise's um, interpretation of how she delivered it. I thought they were a little too impish for me. I thought it was, it was almost like, Oh, there's, you know, fairies that are, misguided fairies is what it felt like. And I didn't, I I don't know. That just didn't set well with me. When she described them, it, the one, what popped in my head are the elves from Christmas Chronicles. There you go. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That's a, something at least that size. (laughs) Yeah. There's a good, good descriptor. for. But no, overall the story was good. I thought it was good writing. It was, it was well performed by, uh, Jameson and, uh, 
it was, it's 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 always nice to to have a brigadier story. I just I, I I never tire of stories featuring the brigadier, especially when they're written by Andy because yes. he does such a good job with them. Yep. Yep. Well, All right, let's move on to the next one. Time of the intelligence. A strange. I suppose we should preface this with the new <laughs> countermeasures series yeah. two. Time should, of the intelligence. We should say surprise. We've added a <laughs> story this week. So if you haven't listened to this story, pause the podcast and go listen to it real quick. It's only about an hour long. A strange voice is interrupting TV broadcasts broadcasts across the capital and bear like creatures are raiding factories, stealing equipment and killing guards. The great intelligence and his army of Yeti have returned. And there's only one team that can stop them. Familiar with their foe, Sir Toby calls on the help of Edward Travers to defeat the menace. But without the doctor to help them, can the intelligence ever be stopped? No. (laughs) (laughs) Subdued temporarily? I enjoyed this. I, um... Again, kind of walk in that line between quite enjoyable and a little frustrating my frustration coming from the fact that i just don't know enough about the new countermeasures because this is the first one i'd listened to so i i mean i i kind of know who the team is but not really you know what i mean um obviously group captain gilmore i know him yeah rachel i know her i think Maybe <laughs> I know who Toby is, but I'm you, not. You don't. You don't. He no. was interv- he was introduced in countermeasures. So in then the, I don't know who Toby series. is. Yeah, Allison he, was in remembrance, and Allison yeah. was in remembrance. Um, both both was, Allison and uh, Rachel were in remembrance, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But um, it, it they they come across kind of as a. Um, Oh, almost um, an Avengers, not uh, the superheroes, but the. the well, it, it comes yeah, across as a mix uh, between, yeah, the Avengers and Unit. Yeah, really. Because the 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 feel of the audio definitely has a feel of the new Unit box sets too. Tonally, they feel very much similar. Uh, yes. And no, I think, uh, yes, in structure and maybe somewhat format, um, no, in the fact that this really feels more Avengers influenced, this feels like something from the 1960s or 70s, which I appreciated. Um, I'm, I'm super excited to do the countermeasure stories um, because I, I thoroughly enjoyed how, you know, the, the, the genesis of them in uh, Remembrance. Um, but I... I, th- I we 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 threw this story in because it's a Andy Franco Allen, and we thought it paired well uh, with doing another story that he did. We have always been hesitant to jump into this one because it is part of the countermeasures series, and we felt or we we were led to believe, and I think it's true that this story does stand on its own. Um, yes, I think my my struggle was what Sean had was I just don't I'm not familiar enough with the team and how they're working now at this point. So yeah. I'm really super excited to listen to this story because knowing that the intelligence shows up, knowing that Edward Travers uh, features in it, knowing that it's tied to, you know, Web of Fear and other other stories that we we thoroughly love. Um, I've been super excited to do this, but I was a little apprehensive going into it, but no, not having started the countermeasures series. And I, and, and I, I still feel that way while I completely enjoyed this story. I really felt like I needed at least a refresher on the characters I do know. And luckily we had kind of gotten that with the uh, comic story that uh, Cartmel wrote, but mm-hmm. uh, it, it, I really feel like I needed to, I, I, I need to go back and listen to, all of the countermeasure stories leading up to this and then listen to this again, because I really feel like I need to, I need to slip into the comfortability of the team and, and, and where they're at now. And I need to know some of the background. I felt like I needed to know more about Toby specifically because he seems to be kind of the guy that's oversees this team. 
Yeah. And so I, I just, I, I hindsight's 2020. I think maybe I would have preferred we waited on this, but the measure of the story itself, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was, it, it took me a little while. I had to go actually go to the timeline. Uh, and I think Andy even clued us into this uh, last year when this came out, that it, it does take place uh, kind of in that middle area. It takes place in 1974. So it would be. Okay, between, I was wondering when that was. Yeah, it would be between Web of Fear and um, his demise in Night of the Intelligence. And so that was my struggle, though, at first when I started listening to it, I was like, okay, can't quite place where this is. Is this countermeasures in the 1960s? you know, post remembrance is this modern day countermeasures because it obviously is the actors much older now portraying it and they don't sound like their younger selves. And so I didn't know if this was supposed to be set modern time. We throw Travers in there and I thought, okay, well this must definitely be back, you know, at least during the time of uh, the uh, Lethbridge Stewart series. And so I just, I, I, I struggled a lot trying to, figure out when and where this was happening. I knew obviously it was post, you know, uh, web of fear, but I didn't know what it was prior to with the exception of, I finally narrowed down that, well, this obviously has to be before, uh, night of the intelligence, but overall it was a good, exciting story. It's, it's really thrilling. I think it, 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 I would have benefited from this story being even longer after I would agree. We put it on and we said, you know, we said, okay, well, it's only an hour. So it was a manageable amount of time to, to listen to it. And then after I was done with it, I really felt like, Oh, I kind of wanted more from that. I kind of wanted more story. Um, it, it, it told what it needed to tell, but it, I don't think it felt rushed, but it certainly could have paced better. And I think had it been a longer story, I think it would have paced a little better and not felt like a dash to the end. Yeah, I would agree. I think the ending specifically, especially ex- they, if it had an, another part or more time, it could have really explored Norma Vine, the the doctor working for the great intelligence and mm-hmm. exploring more of her motivations other than he claims I get to see the universe. Well, okay, it's kind of a well, I love how every time, justification. <laughs> every time she tried to include herself in the plan, the intelligence would shut her down, and there's no way. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, it's just me. Been, after the third or fourth time that you berated me like that, I think I would have said, well, you know, do this on your own then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, and I, too, had similar issues, Glenn, trying to place it in the timeline because the actors sound so significantly older, and... I, I, part of me wonders if this story shouldn't have been done with this team because it sounds like it should be, you know, they were remembrance of the Daleks was set in 1963. So in theory, this is only 11 years later and Gilmore sounds that much older and looks that much older. If you look at the artwork, Mm -hmm. it's hard to make that connection that these are the same people and this is the same team. If this were set in, 1990 i could easily make that connection of oh yeah he's aged that much and that much time and yeah. that, that's where the biggest disconnect for me became once i got past that i thoroughly enjoyed the story and the ride and everything that had to do with the great intelligence and edward travers i think the guy who played him did a really passable uh not spot on exactly but once i kind of got used to the uh oh well that's not actually him mm-hmm. I could totally imagine him, uh, the, the original actor, saying these lines and Certainly acting this way. Certainly the essence of him. Yes, absolutely. It's funny that we all seem to get tripped up because I, 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 I'm in, in exactly the same boat. Um, just based on the artwork, and of course never judge a book by its cover, but based on the artwork for this, I kind of was under the assumption that the new countermeasures meant a present day or, you know, as you said, 90s uh, uh, a grouping of these guys and listening to their voices. That certainly seemed like where we we're at. But then one of them dropped a line about the London event only being a couple of years ago. And yeah. I was like, what? I don't think it's a couple. I said, they, I think they said a few years ago. A few years back. Um, but it wasn't until Travers showed up that I was able to kind of pin down, oh, okay, now I'm... <laughs> I have to cast my mind further back to know where this is, uh, you know, where this is actually located. And so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of right there with you. 
And that's not the fault of the story. That's the fault of us not being familiar with the, the you know, the new countermeasure series. It would be the same equivalent of watching an episode of Torchwood completely out of sequence from, you know, being removed from the rest of it and not right, who right. these people are. But the story itself was good. It was a lot of fun. And I agree with you. I kind of, in a way, wish it was just a little bit longer that it could have maybe fleshed out a few more things. But it was just such a fun, um, not quite rollicking, but, uh, you know, as I said, it, it reminded me a lot of uh, of the Avengers or maybe even the Prisoner, some of those old 60s yeah. uh, television serials. And I wonder if the original countermeasures box sets that they did before they rebranded it as the new countermeasures had even more so of that feel to it because there were four seasons of that. And it looks like it was supposed to be set in the sixties. Yes. Those were, those were set in the sixties. Yes. You said four, four seasons. They only had four stories. No, four seasons. There were four seasons of the original counter. Yeah. Four four stories per box. Yeah. There's four CDs per, per, um, Per box, it and there like. were four box sets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. I didn't realize there were that many. So you're in for a treat when we get to them. Well, I'm in for a long run, and <laughs> and that's the that's the thing. I think that I, I always try not to let the age of the actors get in the way. And in fact, I think I'm always very forgiving. I think more so than than particularly Sean, and I think even Keith to a point. I'm always more forgiving for the voice. Uh, it did take me a long time for, say, uh, Peter Davison. I feel sounds the most different from when he was uh, the age that he was when he played the doctor originally. Um, that's the one that, that I've always struggled the most with, but I, I always try not to get the, let the age of the, the actors or actresses get in the way of putting my mindset of when they, they are setting the stories. And I'm usually pretty okay with that. Um, even uh, Louise Jameson, I had a little bit of trouble with at the beginning, but now when, even when I listen to, anything now i'm I'm so used to her now that that i can picture her as leela in the time that she was leela on television this one though it just i think if we had started from the beginning and eased into this one i think that i would have been in that familiarity with the actors that are portraying the characters that it, the age thing wouldn't have stood out so i think this that could be applied to if we go, we had gone back and started listening to these and me knowing what they sounded, looked and sounded like in, um, remembrance, I probably would have had that initial problem then too. But then by the time I got to this one, thinking about that. And so I think that had we eased into this one and done this chronologically, I probably would have been able to focus on the story a little better. But again, I don't want to take away from the fact that this is a good story because it really is. It's it's exciting and, and it does have that Avengers 1960s action film or action television series feel um, that I feel like they're going for. And I, I, I appreciate that. I really like that. And, and it makes me excited to go in and jump into the, the countermeasure series as a whole. Yeah, no, I agree. I certainly... Um... You know, and uh, again, we we added this one to the schedule because uh, we initially were going to have Andy on the show, uh, and uh, those plans, uh, at least temporarily, have fallen through. So we we kind of substituted Andy with Andy, to no fault of of Andy, because he, yes, through no fault of his own, he's having some technical issues, so. right? But um, it uh, it just it 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 made me very excited for the rest of the, the, the countermeasures and the new countermeasures line. And it, uh, you it, know what? It, sorry, go ahead. No, I just, I, it's, it's funny that the, once again, the serendipity with our timing, because as Glenn pointed out, we just came off of the comic with, um, Gilmore that, uh, uh, Andrew Cartmel had written. So there was at least some familiarity there, but then also um, doing the reading for next week's podcast with uh, Fear of the Web, where we're kind of going yeah. back into the London event. Right. And so running parallel to that and getting this kind of refresher course on all of those things that get brought up and mentioned in this story, it, it's it's just kind of like this is really, it, it, in a way, it really timed itself out nicely. <laughs> it did. I like the connection. Yeah. I, I always enjoy getting into 
connective tissues of the the t- intelligence's story, particularly. And I, 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 my favorite books of the Lethbridge Stewart series, they're all great, but my favorite books are always the ones that deal with the intelligence. And so this is another branch or, or, you know, another um, branch in that timeline that kind of gives you more of what I think we all enjoy when we're reading these stories and indulging our world, you know, in the world of Lethbridge Stewart and the, you know, intelligence stories particularly. So it was really nice to get plopped back into one of these stories uh, tied to the intelligence where he is, where it is at at this point. And, uh, you know, that it's just constantly trying to, you know, make its way back into the world. And I think Mm -hmm. that uh, I, I always enjoy uh, getting back into these stories every time that that we do uh, something connected to the intelligence it's it's just it's 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 a nice little web that's being weaved see what i did there <laughs> clever clever and i agree with the sentiment about the great intelligence i'm not tiring of it at all as an enemy i think they keep utilizing it in a good manner and ex exploring kind of new avenues of its attempts to reassert itself. Yeah. Somebody's got somebody up in the background. Yeah, that sounds like my wee one. Oh, so. oh that's no, that's Mason. I wasn't Mason. No. no. <laughs> <I'm just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and drop the schedule information on you so I can go take care of her real quick. If Let's that's everything it. that we've got for that. Uh next week so. we will be taking a look at the next Lethbridge Tour book. Laughing Gnome, Fear of Web by Allison Leaves. Fear of the Web. Fear of the Web. Fear of the Web. I haven't corrected that on the uh, (laughs) Clearly. (laughs) The following week, uh, our take on a big finish mainline story, 121, Enemy of the Daleks. And then a uh, fun little discussion topic on uh, the state of the Blu-ray box sets and whether or not it's uh, worth upgrading. I, I did just get my uh, opinions on those. I did just get my uh, uh, box set for the last Tom Baker that came out. Uh, ser- uh, well, I don't know how they're, but however they're, <laughs> however they're logging him for us, his uh, final season with Legopolis. So I just oh, nice. got that. So dig on in then. Yeah. Have you guys got any of them yet? You guys uh, both I, have the first Tom Baker season, right? I have the first one. I have none of them. Oh, you have none of them. Well, I guess I'll be sharing around my Blu-ray copy. I know that our library has Peter Davison. So. Ah. Okay. They also have the... Uh, they have the, two the, copies of Peter Davison. I did rent the, uh, the the Tom Baker first season from the library just to kind of check it out and see what oh, it was Oh, that's like. right, because you talked about the comparisons for the films. So. Cool. All right. Well, don't forget you can uh, support us on Patreon. You can become a patron of the podcast, and patrons get more. And we promise that we've got more coming. And uh, for those of you that are already supporting us, we we certainly do appreciate uh, your support. Uh, that does keep us on the internet, keep us uh, continuing to be able to do these stories or these stories, these podcasts for you, and uh, wax lyrical about um, all things Doctor Who. That's anything right. else we need to Anything else we need to touch on before we close out this show? All right. If not, until next week, I'm Glenn. I'm Sean. I'm Keith. Cheers. Good night, everybody. Be seeing you. Go take care of that baby. Will do. Thanks for listening. You have been listening to Traveling the Vortex. Doctor Who and all of its associated programs are owned and trademarked by the BBC. No infringement is intended or implied.